We got ourselves a video on SmartViews in Close CRM. The right setup with your SmartViews is going to ensure no lead ever slips through the cracks. It's going to save you hours within the day-to-day -day of your lead management. It's actually going to multiply the amount of activity you can do. And you're going to get all the exact metrics you need within your sales pipeline and process. My name is Sam Queen. Some people like to call me the Close Doctor. And I've built hundreds of closed CRM accounts over the last six years. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you should be optimizing your smart views within your closed CRM account. We're going to go inside an actual live account of mine where you can see my day to day as a sales manager, along with what the day to days would look like for the setters and closers that we have on our team as well. You can actually see all of my smart views I've got on the left hand side here for my setters, my sales reps, managers, reporting, some training smart views. But before we dive into how to actually build these, let's go into our settings and talk about the hierarchy of your close account, because this is where the foundation's going to start for building those smart views so you can do all of those things that I labeled at the top of this video. Now, I'm predominantly building smart views off of custom activities. I'm building them off of activity metrics or certain users. I'm building them off of maybe a certain status or a pipeline stage that a lead is in. I'm building them off of maybe different custom fields that are associated with that lead and different information about that lead that I got through their marketing or sales journey. And when you're building these specific instances, these specific pieces of your closed CRM account, you want to make sure you're using the fields the right way. You want to make sure you're mapping the data in the right place. Something like a lead status is really just a 30,000 foot overview of a lead's relationship to the company, as you can see it in here. And in this account, I've only got eight lead statuses. I'm probably not going to add any more. We want to keep this super, super high level. My opportunity pipelines and statuses now give a little look inside of my actual sales process. And if you want to see this account being actually built from scratch, head over to this two part series I have on this channel on building a closed CRM account from scratch. The pipeline's really looking into the sales process, my custom fields, they're capturing certain information or data that I'm getting, maybe on my application page, or maybe info from a Facebook ad or a TikTok ad that we're running so I can attribute a source of the lead that I'm getting. Now, when I want to understand is Facebook performing better than TikTok, I have all of that tagged inside of my CRM so I can find that easily. My custom activities in this instance are just going to be my sales process as well. For our sales process here at SendBlue, we've got our new activity. That's everything at the top of the funnel. Where are people coming from? Are they coming from our website? Are they coming from Facebook? Are they coming from TikTok? We might get in touch with them and have contact made on some outbound efforts. If our closer is doing the outbound or if our setter is doing an outbound, I'm making sure I'm logging the closers or setters as a user. I'm making sure I'm logging the date of contact as a date field. I'm making sure I'm logging the outcome as a drop down single select. This way, when I want to filter on this in the future, I can filter on this. This text area field, while a sales rep can leave a good note inside of here, it's going to be you're not going to type in the whole search query to see what the note says, but you would do a select to say, hey, show me all of the contacts made where someone booked a demo as the outcome. That would give us what percentage of leads are we making contact with on outbound efforts that are then booking a demo. And with that percentage, now I know I need to make maybe this many dials so I can get in touch with this many people at this percentage so I can book this many demos. And now it becomes a game of numbers. But these stories are only going to become clear inside of your CRM if you build this foundation the right way. We go to a demo called Booked. You can see what we have inside of here, the date of call, the booking creation date, the lead owner, the source. Right now we only have one source, but what if we had multiple sources? What if we had email campaigns that were pushing book calls as well? Well, we would add another source as emails. I would build another calendar page for an email source only. Then I would be able to track maybe the show up performance of my email campaign book calls versus the show up performance of my website book calls. And outside of just that hierarchy of statuses, opportunity pipelines and stages, custom activities, custom fields, we really want to pay attention to the actual field type if we're ever building a field. Is it that drop down single? Is it a drop down multiple? Something that's a drop down single is going to be a lot easier to filter than something that's just a text field. A date field is going to allow you to filter by date. Give me some information between this date and that date. And I'll show you how we're going to be building that here in a second as well. But if we just brought a date into a text field and we log the date like this, like month, day, year, and it's just in a text field, you might see the date, but you're not going to be able to filter by the date. 
now when I actually look at the smart views that I have inside of this account, I've got my reporting smart views. My reporting smart views are giving me information on how many calls did we book from TikTok yesterday on day one of the opt-in. We didn't book any, we're not running any TikTok ads. How many calls did we book to our website yesterday on day one? We booked 13 of them. How did we make that filter? Well, I wanna see all my leads where there's not a Facebook campaign name, because if there was a Facebook campaign name, they probably came from Facebook. I wanna see all of my leads that were not a TikTok TikTok campaign name, because that means it would have came from TikTok. I want to make sure that that zero one new activity that they have on their profile is showing that they came from the website and not from one of these campaigns. And then I also want to see that they have a demo called books custom activity where the booking creation date is yesterday. This is because I'm always filling out information today for yesterday in my tracking sheets. If I click into one of these leads here and then I filter them by their custom activities only, I'm going to see exactly that with the story that I want to tell. I'm going to see that they were a zero one new activity on the seventh. Today is the eighth. So that is yesterday. The activity type was straight to the website. I can see in the custom fields over here on the bottom left that I don't have anything related to Facebook or related to TikTok. So I know it didn't come from there. I can also see that they booked that call yesterday. Like I said, this smart view is my day one. People that booked a call or they opted in on my website, they booked it on day one. You see here, I've also got a smart view for yesterday's SEO calls total. And this would show me all of the appointments that have come to the website, not from Facebook or Instagram. And booked a call yesterday, but maybe they didn't necessarily opt in yesterday. And that's where that date is missing here. If we compare this smart view to this smart view, that zero one new activity doesn't have a date of yesterday. Now I can see how many leads came to my website yesterday. If I got rid of this, I see 28 of them came to my website yesterday. If I bring that back, I can see 13 of them booked a call. So what percentage of leads that came to my website yesterday booked a call? It'd be 13 divided by 28 or 46%. I can only get that data and do that math because of the way I'm bringing the information in, making it super clean for me. So outside of reporting smart views, I've got my manager smart views. Let's see all of the leads that were created today so far. I've got 62 of them. How easy is that smart view? Day created is today. Let's see all of my leads that were created today that came from from Facebook. So if I add another filter, I'm logging my Facebook campaign name in a custom field. If I just go, this Facebook campaign name is present. I'll see 44 of my leads came from Facebook today. What percentage of my total leads came from Facebook today? 44 divided by 62 or 70%. I really love having in my manager smart views outside of just reporting ones like that, but some process check ones that maybe I'll, I'll throw this little siren emoji on needs post call notes. These are all of my leads where there's a demo call booked. There's not a demo call not completed. There's not a demo call completed. And the date of that call is before today, which means that call has passed and someone on the team, a sales rep, has not logged the outcome of that call. So there's 10 leads in here right now. If I click on this first lead here, I filter it by just its custom activities. We're gonna see that there was a date of activity yesterday where they came to the website. They booked a call yesterday. That data call was also yesterday. So this is a same day website lead that booked a call for the same day and got on the phone on the same day. But our sales rep, Isaac here, has not logged the outcome of this call. What Isaac needs to do is either fill out this demo call not completed, where he would log himself as a lead owner, the date of call and the outcome, or he needs to fill out the demo call completed. And once he does, that's gonna automate this pipeline stage to move to either a demo call completed or not completed stage. That's going to then fill and populate in these other smart views that I'm gonna show you as well. But because Isaac hasn't done this part of the process yet, my reporting metrics aren't accurate. The pipeline stages on this lead profile aren't accurate. And this lead would have an incredibly high probability of slipping through the cracks if I didn't have this smart view in place. Now I actually have that smart view in place for each sales rep where you just add an additional filter that says lead owner is any of me. But if I got rid of the lead owner, I would see those same 10 leads in here. And this is the view from a managerial level. If you add the lead owner is me to the mix and the filter, right? You're just doing that in here. For me, it was that custom activity with the demo call booked and the lead owner is any of will go with me. Then when you're choosing to share the smart view across the account, you can share with everyone in Send Blue, and no matter who logs in on their end, they're just gonna see their leads. So I wouldn't necessarily share this one with everyone. I would keep this one internal to myself or leadership. And then I would share this one, which I've labeled with a blue for a sales reps process with the sales rep so they can just see their leads themselves.
I've got a section for what I call a free for all for everyone. They're my green smart views. They're shared with everyone. This is a master dial list for us. In this master dial list, we have 2000 leads in here right now. There is no setter lead owner. There is no closer lead owner. Their current status is any of qualified or potential, right? So I don't want to see any of the not qualified, the bad fits, the customers, the canceled. So I don't want to see any of those people. I don't want to see any people that have booked a call. So it says there is not a demo call booked. I don't want to see any people that have had contact made. I don't want to say, any people that I've talked to in the last three hours. And I don't want to see any people that I've called more than five times. Now this gets even better because you can then sort by specific fields in here. So I'm filtering this by descended of date created, which means my most recently created lead is always going to be at the top. And then I'm filtering this as well by the number of calls. So it's going to be my most recently created lead with my most amount of calls. And then every three hours, they're going to show back up in here until I've called them five times or until I've made contact with them. I've added a lead owner. I've changed the lead status. Every single time I call someone, they're going to disappear from here. So we've got 2080 in here right now. If I went to this lead, and I log the call, boom, done. I will go back to that master dial list and I refresh, come on, close CRM, show me 2079 inside of there. There she goes, so on and so forth. So what I'm doing in a smart view like this as a master dial list is I'll be able to take advantage of either a power dial inside of closed CRM or I'll be able to take advantage of the predictive dialer inside of closed CRM, where if I hit that manage button, I come into here, I turn on reduce ring time, I turn on predictive calling, I can start calling at a higher multiple with these leads if I'm dialing with other sales reps. And this is where you're gonna see some really, really big numbers. Like our sales rep, Tim, who just on Thursday last week, let me go to that date here, who on Thursday last week threw up some crazy number. Oof, 280, Jackson, shout out to Jackson, 418 calls. Jackson throws up 418 calls in one day in one list with a predictive dialer. It's made easy inside of Close CRM. I've got a couple smart views for my setters. Here's all the leads that have never replied to us. They're in a current status of potential, number of received SMS is less than one, and there's no task on them, right? These are all leads that have never applied to us. We don't have any task. We've got no information whatsoever. These would maybe be a different priority than the master dial list. That's why I've got some of these still labeled with XX and putting the emojis in front of them if you're on a Mac is just gonna be a control command spacebar, by the way. But I'm still trying to figure out ultimately what is the best motion. And when I have the best motion and best day to day where the highest priority is up first, then I'll number these and label these. But all of these smart views, what's really important about them, especially from like the sales rep level, is if I look at my demo completed follow-up, they're all built to be emptied. All of these smart views or my client check-in or my lost deal touch point. Let's go into there. These are all of my leads where I'm the lead owner, their current lead status or opportunity status, I should say, is in a lost status. I have not talked to them for three weeks and they're not DNC or bad fit. So only give me maybe the qualified or not qualified leads. Maybe they have more money. If I click into this lead here, it's been January 9th since I talked to them last. I could click our little send blue Chrome extension and I can send this lead an iMessage right within my closed CRM account. And if you're not sure what this is, check out this other video on your screen here where I actually use this tool, SendBlue, to sell inside of my CRM for a half hour straight. So I'm just gonna fire that off to this lead here. That's gonna log back in here. And I just wanna talk to this lead and say, what's up? And now that I've talked to that lead, his name is Santosh. We'll go back to that lost deal touch point and we should see that Santosh is no longer in there. Refresh. 26 leads, now we're down to 25 and Santosh was at the top and he's gone. And if I put a touch point on all of these leads, they would all disappear. Three weeks later, they would all come back. And I can apply that principle to any of my smart views in here like this completed demo follow-up. There's eight leads in here that have a current status of qualified or potential. They're in a demo completed stage. I haven't talked to them for two days. Closer lead owner is me and I don't have a task on them. Let's just say I had a task on one of these leads in the future. They're not going to be inside of that completed demo follow-up anymore. We should see seven leads in there just like that. Now that send blue extension I just showed there is what we use inside of Close CRM. I'm not even sure we have a 2P in this account. If I wanted to text a lead, I couldn't even do it because we use iMessage inside of our CRM here. We integrate with a tool called send blue. It gets you two to three times higher response rates compared to an SMS bubble. This is actually our metrics right here where you can see the blue line is our iMessage response rate. The green line is our SMS response rate. So when you're texting an iPhone, if you don't want those scammy, ugly green bubbles, you don't have to use it. 
it or have it when you're with SendBlue as an integration. Dashboard looks like this. Chrome extension integrates like this, makes it super easy to actually integrate iMessage directly within your CRM. I'll leave you with one other sort of smart view section I have here. These are just all one lead profiles. I put a little training emoji on there. These are all my one conversation logs, I call it, where I got someone to a demo called Booked. And why I'll build these is when I'm onboarding a sales rep, I want them to click on every single one and study the lead profiles. I want them to actually read and understand what's exactly happening within each lead profile. How did we get them to a demo called Booked? What kind of text were we sending? What kind of language were we using? That way everyone starts talking the same exact way, getting leads to book their calls. So we have full calendars and hopefully full pipelines. And with this closed CRM set up right here, I can get my no-show rate down to the day. I can get my show-up rate down to the month. I can get my close rate by each channel, by each sales rep. I can understand, so show me all of my deals that have closed, where their current status is any of signed up or customer in this case, and their CRM that they use is go high level. So I've got over 100 deals that are signed up, and their CRM is any of go high level. 49 of those deals. So I've got a 50% of my deal rate is coming directly from Go High Level, which makes a lot of sense. I got a Go High Level jumper on right now, and I love Go High Level for their automation builder, and it makes it really easy to integrate actually with SendBlue. We actually at SendBlue use Go High Level to build our automations. I've never actually built an automation inside of this closed account yet or set up A2P because you don't have to. Thanks for hanging out with me in this video. This is hopefully the only closed CRM smart view video you'll ever have to watch. The biggest thing is setting your structure up the right way the first time. If you're looking for me or someone else just like me to help you out with that, I'll leave a link down in the description so you can get in touch with me. And if you're looking to sign up for SendBlue, I'll leave a link down in the description for that as well. Thanks for joining. Bye for now.